as we see what is being presented, we also see the extraordinary valor of the Capitol Police who risked and gave their lives to save our capital, our democracy, our lives. Uh, they were martyrs for our democracy, martyrs for our democracy, those who lost their lives. That is why I am putting forth a resolution uh, introducing legislation to pay tribute to the Capitol Police and other law enforcement uh, of, uh, personnel who protected the Capitol by giving them a Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor that Congress can bestow. The service of the Capitol Police Force that day brings honor to our democracy. Their accepting this reward brings luster to this medal. We must always remember their sacrifice and stay vigilant against what I've said before about what Abraham Lincoln said, the silent artillery of time. We will never forget. Them women and if the District of Columbia could operate as a state, as any governor can do, is to call out the National Guard without getting the permission of the federal government. It shouldn't have to happen that way. And if you see the letter, December, uh, excuse me, January 4th letter from the uh, Secretary of Defense saying what he wasn't going to do, it, it's, it's most unfortunate. But I think everything has to be subjected to the harshest review to make sure this doesn't come again. I have not said anything. I'm particularly interested in how women are affected by the pandemic, but also by this legislation. Over 2.3 million women have been forced to leave the workforce entirely, including one million moms. That's why this bill is so important, because it has a strong commitment to child care so that parents, moms and dads, are able to go to work. It has a strong commitment to getting our kids back to school another path to the workforce uh, for moms. In the bill, uh, it gradually raises the minimum wage to $15 an hour, increases paychecks. In doing so, increases paychecks for 27 million workers and pulling nearly a million people out of poverty.